Hi, so welcome to our second lecture. In this lecture, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the Linux file system uh, and compare it a little bit to the Windows file system and get started with some basic navigation and stuff like that. Um, so you can follow along on my site. Um, history lesson, uh, Linux is based off a of mainframe. Uh, mainframes were in use. They would be used by many users at the same time. Um, eventually we got to the point where we started having personal computers and that was a big revolution where you could take this computer which before would have been this like you know piece of industrial machinery almost and you could put it inside the home and have it on your desk and you know use it to play Pac-Man or whatever um, so you can think about it kind of like this Windows was built around this idea of being like a you know a single user in a single location uh, Linux and Unix before it was built on this idea of having many users accessing something at the same time and almost having it be like a, a little bit of a community and at some times you know you could send mail to people and you know you could you can share things in different home directories anyway so on matrix uh, you can consider yourself to kind of be a tenant um, you rent out a space or you don't rent a space because you know you don't really pay for it except for tuition or whatever so you have a bit of a space uh, you have control over that space but all the stuff that is outside of your space like for example like the furnace room the basement the storage room the laundry room you don't really have the keys to those locations you're not responsible for those locations you don't have permission to be there or to be changing any of the settings um, a superintendent or an administrator would have those uh, privileges um, that authority and you don't really have that so let's get started we'll just sort of like um, this is not matrix but uh, this is uh, similar so you'll get the basic idea I'm just gonna show you around a little bit um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is run this command LS LS stands for list and what it does is it lists files and directories so we can take a look inside and we see a bunch of stuff in here um, and so the next thing that we can do is use a command called CD a CD stands for change directory and what I want to do is to be going into this directory called documents so that's what I'm gonna do right now and then I'm gonna press enter and then I can run LS again and you can see I got some stuff in documents so to move back out of uh, documents uh, what you'll do is use cd dot dot okay um, this should be very similar to the first uh, lesson in assignment one and uh, one other thing I'm gonna do here I'm gonna use another command this one is called print working directory and what you'll get is back is the sort of a, the absolute path of where you are right now we're going to talk about that idea of absolute path in a second, but uh, just know that this is going to tell you exactly where you are. So I can go back in documents and I can go here and my when I print my working directory you can see that it's different, right? Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is um, we're going to explore a little bit outside of your, you know, your apartment. We're going to go a little bit into the common space that exists. Um, that is common to all users. So I'm going to go CD. Uh, notice the slash there. And I'm going to go into a location called bin. And when I run this, we get a lot of different stuff back. Um, keep in mind, actually, there's some interesting things that you'll see here. Like, for example, LS is located here. Uh, so LS is a command. Um, it's an executable. This is where it lives. You can imagine the amount of chaos that would happen if somebody were to go and modify LS so that instead of like listing the files in a location, it would like, I don't know, reboot your computer or something like that. So this is why not every user has the authority to be changing everything in the file system. Uh, we definitely don't want students to be able to break stuff. So one thing that uh, a lot of students have difficulty with, at least the first uh, time, the, you know, around the first midterm, um, 
is really visualizing how we move around in the file system. So I thought I would sort of um, offer this other diagram over here. Um, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller. Yeah, so this is um, a kind of a tree diagram. You see a lot of sort of trees in um, computer science used in different cases. Um, but this is very, very, very similar to how our file system works. Okay. Um, now, there's some rules about how we move around in Linux. So just think of this as kind of a game. And here are the rules to the game. Um, every dot you see here is a directory. Moving along any line will take one turn. Okay, we always want to minimize the number of turns that we take. Now, just because you know we're lazy and we don't like typing, um, every directory has only one parent, except for the very top directory over here. This is true. You can see uh, this directory might have several children, but only one parent. Uh, directories don't need to have unique names. So you could have many directories with the name bin. And in fact, that's pretty common for there to be numerous directories like that. Um, that does make it kind of uh, difficult because if you're going to be navigating somewhere, you can't rely on the fact that like um, that that name has that that name is unique. Um, so, the way we get around that is we have to be very explicit in all of the steps that we take. We can't jump around in this diagram. We always have to be um, explicitly telling the computer the path that we're taking. And we'll see, you'll see what we mean in a second. Uh, we need to be able to move from anywhere in the tree to anywhere else. Um, so take this and multiply it by thousands more directories and stuff doesn't matter, you still need to be able to get around no matter what. Uh, we always need to be specific when we're describing our moves and when choosing our path we can start from our current location or from the top of the tree. So if we're over here, we can start from here. Let's say that you know, you're starting here and you want to get here. Um, so you can start from here and follow that path or you can just start from the beginning. But no matter what you do, you want to minimize the number of steps that you take. Okay, so let's talk about how all of these rules uh, fit together. So one of the first um, movements that we can do is moving from a parent into a child or a subdirectory. Um, so here to be able to do this, you need to use the change directory command and you just need to name the subdirectory. So you can see I'm over here, right? I can see that I've created a directory called B and for me to get there I just do CD uh, capital B and that's where I'll go. The next thing that I'm going to do is be going into a sub subdirectory. So to do this, this is going to take two steps and the way that we indicate that there are two steps is we're going to put uh, a slash between the two steps. Okay, so you can see that we're still in the location A. So I'm going to do change directory over here, and I might put the first subdirectory, and then the subdirectory of that will be B. Okay, and you can see that that's worked out. Um, I can show you uh, quickly just what that looks like. So this is me over here. Let's say we started at A, we're getting from point A to point B and we just follow it by basically showing the both steps. Okay, the next kind of move that we're going to do is we're, when we're moving up the tree, when we're moving to a parent. Now remember I said that uh, there's only ever one parent for a directory. Um, so instead of forcing us to type the name of the parent, what we can just do is use the uh, dot dot to indicate that we're moving to the parent and that's still going to take one move so here's what it looks like let me just clear this off so I'm going to go cd dot dot you can see over here my current location is A right now and A is a subdirectory of B when I run this we're now in B and if I were just to run an ls command you can see that we've come from A okay similar similarly uh, when we're moving uh, up 
the tree, uh, we can also, um, like if we want to move more than one parent at a time, we can definitely do that. Uh, we have to indicate each of our turns. Uh, so for example, this is what it looks like. We're going to do change directory. We're going to indicate the first parent and then the second parent. And this is what it looks like. Okay. And then you can see that we are in point B. Let me just do a quick tree so you can see what that looks like. Now, for lateral movements, uh, that is uh, not moving from a parent or to a child or from a child to a parent or anything like that, but sort of to a uh, sister or brother. Um, we can't leap across. We need to follow the lines. Um, so we need to sort of specify the parent before we can travel down into uh, the subdirectory. So if we're starting at A and we want to move to B, um, I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So let me just quickly show you uh, with a tree diagram. So you can see we've got A and B. We're in A right now and we want to get to B. So what we have to do is CD parent slash B. And there we go. Now one of the next rules to talk about is uh, when we start from root. Remember I said that you always have the option of starting from the very top of the file system to get anywhere. And the way that we indicate that is by starting the path with a slash. So for example, we wanted, if we wanted to get the slash B over here, we could totally do that. Um, if you follow the diagram over here, if we're starting from A, um, it actually takes more steps to travel from the current location to B than it does just to start from the beginning. So you can kind of see what that looks like if we go over here. So our current location right now is in B. And let's say that uh, where we want to go, our destination is documents. So in this situation, to move all the way over there would take, uh, let's see, that's one step, two steps, three steps to get to student, um, and then another one to get down to documents. So that's four steps. But if we just wanted to go to documents, we could go one step home, one step student, one step documents, and that's three. Um, so remember, you always want to be minimizing the number of steps that you take, no matter what. Okay. So I'm here I'm taking our uh, tree diagram and I'm beginning to give it uh, some more recognizable names for everything. So you can see that uh, maybe change Eric to student and you get the basic idea, right? Um, so when we were basically running through things, uh, you could see there were a couple different ways I was doing things. If you're using CD dot dot, then that's basically you traveling from your current location. Whereas if you're starting with a slash over here, that means you're starting from the top. And um, basically, you can kind of see how this diagram matches up with this diagram. You just have to take this whole thing and flip it on its side and take out the bubbles and replace it with uh, directory names. And you get the basic, same basic idea. Um, if you want to uh, ever get a better idea of what things look like, you can use the tree command. You've seen me use it over here a couple of times. The one problem is that the tree uh, command isn't always available to you. Um, sometimes it's something that you have to install um, after the fact. Um, so that's kind of a disadvantage. The best thing is just to start getting comfortable using ls, pwd, and CD to be able to get around and stuff like that. Um, but this is pretty handy for being able to visualize how things work. Um, so that should be everything for now. Um, please remember these commands because we're going to be using them more in the future.